This week on Around Campus, I got to sit down with County Executive Laura Curran. Here's our entire conversation on this week's BNB Interviews Extended Interview. Hello and welcome to this week's exclusive Around Campus. I'm Jake Winkleman and today on the show I'm with the Nassau County Executive Laura Curran. So welcome to Around Campus, Mrs. Curran. Thanks for having me, Jake. Unfortunately, the topic does remain the same here as it has been for the past seven months. It's the coronavirus. Could you give us an update about the latest impacts of the coronavirus on Nassau County? Absolutely. So as we know, on March 13th, we really did shut down because of coronavirus. And unfortunately, in that time, we've lost over 2,000 of our residents here in Nassau to the virus, and over 45,000 have contracted COVID-19. But I'm really happy to say I am so proud of our schools, our students, our teachers, our businesses, our residents uh, for being able to come back. We started the reopening process at the end of May. And since then, our rate continues to go down and stay down. Our hospitalization rate is in a good place because people are using common sense. You know, we're readjusting how we do things, using the mask. The fact that you and I can be speaking to each other, even though we're in different rooms, I think is a testament to how far we've come. And speaking about school, as students across the county have returned to school, what are your thoughts on uh, how school reopening has been going across the county? So as you know, Jake, we have 56 independent school districts here in Nassau County. Each community is different and each school district has made its own decisions and its own protocols on how to reopen. So some are back full time, some are doing a hybrid like my kids are uh, in middle school and high school at a different district. And I think by and large, the schools are doing really well. I know we're hearing about some cases here and there, but they're being handled very well from everything that I've seen and everything I'm hearing. And I have to say, I'm really proud of our school community for being able to pull this off. I, I know I'm looking forward to being able to go back full time, everyone back. I think young people are very social, obviously. They need to be with their peers. I think the little kids learn better when they're in a classroom setting with their teachers. I think it's really hard to do this for a lot of children, really hard to do this in front of the computer all day. Yeah, I heavily agree with that. And across the county, what have been some of the uh, success stories of the reopening of schools this fall? Well, we see them every day. It's almost like a daily miracle. Um, there has been so much scrambling to get ready, to get the kids ready. When you think about everything that goes into running a school, it's school buses, it's the lunchroom, it's what do you do about art, what do you do about band, what do you do with kindergartners who really don't like social distancing, they're not really built for that. You know, all of that thought has gone into this and uh, the fact that it's gone so well is a real testament to our school communities here in Nassau. And do you have any concerns uh, specifically for uh, students uh, returning to school this fall? Um, I, I'm actually pretty optimistic. Of course you always have concerns. We have days where our rate is a little higher than others and that makes me concerned. But, you know, by and large people are using common sense. And as long as we continue to use common sense and understand what the protocols are and continue to do the right thing, I think we're going to be fine. I agree. And with the infection rate ticking up across the state and in the county, what is your message? What are things we should be doing to slow the infection rate and at what point does a rising infection rate become a concern for reopening? Well, there's one direct concern. If the infection rate goes up to a certain amount, schools are going to just shut down again. I don't think we can go back to that. So my advice to everyone, I, I don't like to proselytize and preach, but I say just keep doing what you're doing because it's working. Uh, don't think this thing is gone. It's not gone. We're seeing in little pockets in the state right now, it's starting to come back a little bit, a little bit higher than it has been. So that's just a reminder for all of us to continue to use common sense, keep following the protocols, and then get this, finally get this past us. And earlier this month, you sent a letter urging uh, Nassau County Section 8 to reconsider its decision to delay fall sports until the spring. Now that the delay is state has followed Section 8's lead, what are your thoughts on the fall school sports season? Well, I've spoken to superintendents who think there should be no fall sports, and I've spoken to superintendents who think there should be fall sports. 
My personal opinion is that I think the schools can handle it. I think it's actually good for kids to be in structured sports programs. I think it's good for their overall development. It's good to stay active. It's healthy. And I think you can actually have a little more control when you're in a school structured environment. Because, I mean, I have teenagers. I used to be a teenager. They're not necessarily going to be doing great things if they're not doing sports. Not that I don't have full confidence is in the young people of Nassau County. Yeah. <laughs> well, is there anything the county can do to fill the gap for students left by the loss of school sports? Well, this is a decision that's made by Section 8. I'm not the boss of Section 8, but I've written a letter, I've advocated, and I just want to keep the lines of communication open. There are, I think there are good reasons for both. I personally think it can be done. The fact that we've done league sports over the summertime, it's been done safely. Um, we haven't seen any outbreaks from those, I think, uh, is a real good indicator that we could, we could bring sports back in school. Well, sports aside, as a fan of the cinematic experience, when do you think movie theaters in Nassau County will be given the green light and can open back up? How did you know I was a fan of the cinematic experience? I love <laughs> movies. And I had I, to know. I, yeah, you did your research, obviously. <laughs> so I visited about five theaters recently. So small independent ones along with the big chains. Just to have a look at what the protocols they put in lace what they were going to do to keep people safe, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, I was really confident. I felt I could send my family. I'd be happy sending my parents to the movies. I think they can do it safely. And you know, you think about the people who work there. You think about the taxes that they pay on these big properties. So there's all this money going in, and there's no, I, I'm sorry, there's all this money going out. There's no money coming in, no revenue coming in. And some of them might not even make it. Also, as it gets cooler, we're not going to be going to the beach as much, the parks and all that sort of thing. Uh, people need something to do, something fun to do, a good way to spend their time. And I think if you, if you, you can do the social distancing, you require the masks, they all have the filters. I, I honestly think it could be done safely. And this is something I'm advocating for to the state, because it's the state, it's New York State that makes this decision. So we have daily calls with our partners at the state, and I am making the case every day that these sorts of places can open and open safely. Uh, one more Thank thing you I just so want to much. say, Jake, sorry to interrupt, just one more thing. They're no open problem. in other states, and there hasn't been an outbreak coming stemming from a movie theater, so that's another piece of evidence. Okay, great news. All right, well, I just can't wait already. <laughs> yeah. And with any, crisis come, uh, with any crisis comes an opportunity. Has the coronavirus created an opportunity for remaking Nassau County? How would you like to rebuild once the coronavirus is behind us? That is such a great question. So one thing that I've seen, I'll just give you one example, outdoor dining. You see how restaurants have reconfigured their sidewalks, their parking lots, there's lights, there's tents. It's a really nice, almost European kind of street plaza feeling, which I love. And I've been speaking to some restaurant owners and they're, they're gonna keep doing this, which I think is a great idea. Something that we did on the county level, if a, a town, if a village wanted to close down their main street and their main street was a county road, we streamlined the process so they could do it more quickly so they could have more outdoor dining. So that was something we did early on in the summertime and we really saw a lot of villages and towns take advantage of this sort of thing. Is there anything the community can do to help rebuild our county ourselves? That's a really nice question. So. We saw our community really step up during COVID. We organized PPE drives and food drives for hospital workers, health workers, and first responders. And the outpouring was so generous and so consistent, it made me so proud of our residents. Uh, I, our businesses want to do the right thing. Our residents want to do the right thing. So I just say to our wonderful residents, keep doing the right thing. Keep doing what you're doing. We got where we are because of you. And I'm really grateful for that. So keep it going. And with the whole thing with the masks, um, have they been mandatory? Why, why not? And like, if, is there a penalty if masks aren't worn? So the state has required the wearing of masks when you can't be within, when you are, you know, when you're going to be closer than six feet with someone. If you're outside right. um, and you know you're going to be close to people, it's, have, it's good to have the mask inside. Obviously, it's easier to spread, so that, that is required. Now, that being said, we don't have the mask police going around giving tickets to people. 
Um, and we haven't really had to because most people are just using common sense. We have gotten thousands upon thousands of complaints about establishments, about bars and restaurants and other kinds of places, weddings that are happening. Um, most of the time, when our fire marshal goes to speak with them, they get it. They understand what they have to do. We use it as an educational opportunity. Very few times have we actually had to give violations. However, I do get a lot of people emailing me at my office, you know, reporting about people who aren't wearing their masks and what are we doing. So anytime we get a complaint like that, we check it out and we go and speak to people, speak to businesses, speak to catering hall, whatever, who they are, whoever they are, um, to do the right thing. And they do, by and large. Yeah, I personally think it's the best way to stay safe. And uh, personally, why did you decide to be interviewed by BNB? Why? You know what? If you invite me, I will come. It's as easy as that. <laughs> also, in my previous life, before I got into politics, I used to be a newspaper reporter. So I love speaking to students. I love speaking to the press. Um, and the fact that this is such a wonderful broadcasting program that you have here. It's really sophisticated. It's a great operation and uh, wanted to come visit it. Well, that's awesome. Thank you. And as our county executive, what do you think is most f uh, important for us to look forward to in the future? Hmm. Well, I think sometimes people get pretty cynical when they look at what's going on on the national scene, when they look what's going on on the, on the international scene. Uh, but I think there is a lot to look forward to. We have a wonderful county, we have beautiful beaches, we have a lot of people now interested in moving into Nassau County from the city, looking for a little more space, looking for, you know, a home and good schools, and that's something that we have here that not a lot of people have. Uh, we also were uh, chosen as, U not sort of chosen isn't the right word, but U.S. News and World Report did an analysis and looking at all these different metrics about safety and they found that Nassau County is the safest community in the country. So that's something for all of us to be really proud of. Our residents, our law enforcement, you know, all of the first responders. It's thanks to them and thanks to our residents that, that we've been able to do that. So I think we have a bright future here in Nassau County and I just wouldn't want anyone, especially young people, to become cynical about what's going on in the world. I know cynicism is easy, but if you want to see good things in the world, then you can make them happen by doing them yourself. Well, that's awesome to hear. I actually never knew that Nassau County was the safest uh, county in the country. That's great. Yeah, it just came out on and, Friday. Um, <laughs> that's great. And you're an ideal world. Uh, I guess we already have a great goal uh, accomplished, but what is another goal you would love to accomplish by the end of the year for Nassau County? I would love for there to be a vaccine for COVID so that we could get back to normal. Mm -hmm. And you know, one yeah. thing that has happened is our, we've had the health crisis, but that's also been an economic crisis. Uh, so many businesses have struggled. So many people are out of work. We've been doing food drives and thousands of people are coming. There's a new need. So the quicker we can get this virus behind us and get back to normal, the happier I will be. So if I had one goal, that would be it. Thank you so much, Mrs. Curran. It was fantastic having you here in the studio. Thanks for having me, Jake. Take care. You too. Now back to you guys.